it's the proof of insanity and it? just doing the same thing again and again <laughs> expecting a different result that's basically me oh, and dear. now at this point we're on the cusp of being kicked off good morning we're back we've got another tasty exciting episode all about planning planning application number three we're getting to love it so yeah little. if you hadn't seen our previous video we'll put a link to that on the screen now uh, because that describes what we were put through with our first two attempts uh, but we had to move on about um, how we become squatters yeah down down point in our lives right if you're not familiar with the channel uh, we'll do a quick introduction this is joe and i'm tim and we're spilling our tea and we bought a farm last year but we didn't have any planning permission here so it was an educated gamble slash silly move uh, and in our last video we explained how we had two attempts at getting a planning uh, app through to convert this barn behind us they were unsuccessful for some petty reasons and some that we figured we could um well we could amend bits and, and get across the line but we thought we'd give we it thought. one more go third time lucky and this is a class q so class q and is, we... a, is a conversion rather than a new a full app um, so it's it's permitted development so the first thing to change was the patio we made it internal space um yeah. even though you know we still kept it open um but we classed it as internal space that did mean we had to cut out some of the rooms upstairs yeah or like, 70 square like quite a bit wasn't it Half. yeah at least make them smaller or bring them in a different place so and put one bedroom down i think didn't we Tim? yeah and, and we stuck with the idea of the patio because we could have actually erased all those problems by just making that patio into indoor, another lounge or something like that. But we kind of really stuck with our guns and we thought that was a really good addition to have a covered patio area. In terms of just having a space where we can sit in, you know, in shade and, yeah. and store our stuff. Yeah, it was um, just a bit more sheltered. Yeah. So we, we stuck with it and uh, agreed with the council that we'll call it indoor space and it added into the total so we had to lose that somewhere else we also had a different um officer on this one same council but a different person was put in we charge did. of ours he was a newbie um newish newish um so he didn't um he seen he let let us believe that everything was kind of going okay i did manage to find him at the gate one day when he came to do his first look around or the look around and we had a chat and I walked around with him and I kind of explained all the hiccups in the past, like the gutter that had broken off that they said we were extending the building by putting it back on and, and all the little things. And I thought, oh, now he's seen them. He knows who we are, We're not just developers. And hopefully that would, you know, just give it a bit of context. Gave him my number and said, if you need to come back and all this sort of stuff, play the good cop. And um, we thought that was going to be beneficial. And then I mean, it wasn't not. No, no, well, we don't know, but it, it was over Christmas. So it's 56 days, including weekends, including bank holidays. Including we, holidays. We yeah. put it in in November, end of November. So there was something like only 30 working days or something, you know, it was yeah. hardly any Especially time. Especially if he took extra holiday off, we don't know. Yeah. I, I know he was off for some of it because it was... That was frustrating. And he said he only can really look at it two weeks before the deadline. Long story Not short. Not a peak. And then come January... For this, this Rejected. was even worse. This was 4.55 on the Friday after, or on the day of the 56th day. And you, and you do start thinking like, oh, this, this must be it. Like we, we seem to have done everything, you know, we ticked all the boxes yeah. this time and that doesn't seem to be an issue. But so the three reasons this time, which again is really annoying because realistically the plans haven't changed a huge amount. It's still the same barn. And they're different reasons And they're each different time. reasons. So, so it's, it, like, it's ridiculous. Like, so things that we thought were an issue or were an issue on the first one were just never even mentioned, even no. if it hadn't really changed. So the barge boards, as you can see behind us. No, the, the, the wooden, cladding. Yeah, sorry. That's uh, what the Yorkshire board. Yeah. The, what, do you, the, what do I call them? Barge, barge boards are the caps on the end of the, the bit okay. that's fallen oh, off. Oh, okay. I'll say that bit again then. <laughs> no, no, sorry. So the, the cladding. Thing. They said in the, in the rejection that they could see no possible way of converting that and making it weatherproof. You don't really, you shouldn't have to detail everything at this point. We, we said that there would be a wall on the inside. So obviously if you put a wall the other side of that or even a stud wall and you have a, you know, facade membrane behind there, that there were, there's a 101 ways of doing that 
it seemed bizarre and they were kind of just grabbing at different new things. They'd never even mentioned that. So that was one reason. The second reason was the roof. So you are w within the class Q conversions, you're allowed to, to re-roof uh, and we just put in a like for like roof. This is an yeah. asbestos corrugated really roof. Keep it. Just doesn't make sense to keep it. And so, so we put in a like for like sort of sheet It's not in bad roof. nick though, it's, it's still you no, know, it's it does the job. But, um, um, but yeah, we just thought if we're going to do it, we may as well do it right. And, and I don't think there was any objection to that the whole year previous and in there the wasn't other any applications. Mentions in any of the applications. And then the third thing just was new openings. Oh, yeah. So we weren't, they didn't like us putting in new openings, but they so were in. The, the only openings we'd put in on this side was where, where this cladding is, so no structural amendments anywhere. And all the other um, glazing and, and new openings were within existing openings. And most barn conversions put in new and you're allowed to, it's all in the literature, you're allowed to put in new openings. Either way, they said not here, you're not. they kind of just combined those and just said it's too much. And the, yeah, they use this lovely phrase, which is um, uh, the works cons uh, are considerably more than is necessary to convert. And they go beyond what is yeah. reasonably necessary. Yeah, which is so which subjective. It, it's I just said, the one bit that they, they can. They can use that. I, and that's that's. It's we hard then, to argue. We were in an argument then, a discussion about what we do next. So we'd both decided that was it. Our consultant was gone. She'd had, they'd had, so she'd had three time, three tries, um, and we thought, let's try some. There was new. just Whatever not enough do back and next, forth in communication. And, we wanted, yeah. we we just need somebody new. Um, we thought she hadn't kind of thought hard enough. So our little tip to you now is to go and look at other planning applications, and you can see emails back and forth from the planning officers to the council. You can in um, our local authority. In our local authority. And I, to be fair, I think that's how we found our first consultant, but we were looking at Different. applications in other areas yeah. and it's very specific in this case. Well, in most applications, it's very specific to your local authority. And while it's only one county away, completely different rules over there. But, um, he was very pushy on his emails. He was like um, requesting meetings on site with the the head people um, and saying you know this wasn't right and for his other applications yeah. so um and we'd also had good words from other people who'd we asked um, around a bit and... yeah um so we decided we'd head them up we then had four different options with our new consultant we went for a sit down meeting and, and we took our architect because our architect yeah, tom was brilliant shout out and our ra architects shout out to them because throughout all of this They've he has actually been, been quick. the one. Yeah. He has been And our ecologist has been good. Um, yeah, he's been really good. But any small amendments, it's almost been same day and then fire. So if the council came up with something, he, he'd just make that tweak and then, yeah. you know, it was straight back. And, and we resolved a lot of stuff that way. So we had yeah, four, four options. options one was to do a pre app, talk to the council, get an idea about what they wanted from, from it. How are we going to get this across the line? And by doing that, you kind of like. Layer you you allow them to feel like they've yeah. got a bit of input, yeah. but in reality, a pre-app doesn't give you any additional, like, it's only a conversation almost. Yeah, and I think there's a wait, isn't there? Oh, uh, it's just so slow here. It, gone are the days where you could just have an informal conversation, uh, you know, yeah. on site. So that, that was one option. Second option was to appeal our last um, refusal. Um, I think at that point we had two that were still in the time yeah. zone, but... That was an option, and the, but the reason, and a lot of people who we've had conversations with said, definitely appeal it. This would definitely get through outside of the council because it's when you appeal something, it's given to an independent inspector. Yes. Um, so they have no uh, like local politics in their you know in their team to or, or plus they'd just be a little bit more out of the area, <laughs> so they might look at other cases. They, they can only look at all different areas. They're only looking at what it was rejected on as well. It's not like they're they looking can't, at everything. Yeah, they can't find anything new, which we also like, didn't we? Should we sit down here because my arm's going to fall yeah. off? He did say his main um, issue with doing an appeal, because I was quite keen to do it, he said, if you do that, that's kind of like your last, um, your last resort. Once you've done that and if you don't get it, it'll be very hard <laughs> to put in any more applications. Mainly because Even if they find that. an issue, any future application, the council will just use that as their ammo. That, so we parked that idea yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so our next option was a full app. 
um, which we were pretty keen on. And actually, so was our planning um, advisor. He, that was his gut, let's do full. He, um, he said he tends, in our area, he tends to be more successful with full apps. Yeah. Tim was quite keen to do another class queue, which... I just felt like... <sighs> No, it wasn't like a we can't be beaten on this, but it was it was also like surely if we if we go over everything and simplify everything, it's a everything. time thing too. Tim just thought with Chris's approach because he was so firm in what we'd seen, and if he was pushing it and he knew the council that just a little bit better, yeah, he knew kind of how to you know. Get I I, I still stuff. think that if if our current consultant was at the helm for our third application, he might have got it over the line for us, yeah. or we could do a combination. We yeah. could you know, do a full app and appeal something or do a full app and a class queue or whatever it might be. So do do the class queue, I but really strip back. A class queue that we wouldn't really Sorry. want to build, um, but something that we knew could get us one step closer to what we actually want. So we had to almost admit defeat and say, right, we won't do the mezzanine. We won't do the patio. We won't we go won't, for what we want. We'll just go for what we can. We won't have any views. Um, so we minimise... Uh, windows glazing <laughs> lost the patio lost the upstairs well so that was happening we finished the cabin and we were waiting for the plan the you know the answer Some feedback um, yeah. um but we were about to lamb and um we needed to be on site for that so we made the decision that we were going to set ourselves the goal we also really really wanted to be in over a year we really wanted to be here. And, and a stupidly, lot more... someone bought loads of sheep and goats, pigs, and um, so what? we're actually the, being he had, on site. He had a wise wife too, I'm sure, who said, "Let's just wait until we're on site. We've got the rest of our lives for this." So we were driving back and forth all the time, and yeah. you know, relying and on webcams. And school was further away from where and... we live, and you know, um, yeah. it was it was really hard. Um, and to... because we're living everything in a public eye, we kind of needed to do everything by the books, and I really yeah. wanted to do it that way. Uh, so that was why, obviously, we weren't going to live on site, and endless people will be doing that, you know, and <laughs> it's fine, like, it's the best way to manage your land. But it would be another application, another full application, to get permission just to be here temporarily in the cabin. So yeah. we decided that come April we were going to move in, it was half term or Easter, Easter holidays. holidays. So we were like, well, let's just move in. We've and got the lambing as a reason, at least, and if they say we, we've got to move back out, then we've got to move back out. Um, so it was, a, and we did feel a little bit apprehensive, didn't we, after yeah. those first few weeks when the lambing was over and we were still waiting, and then Tim phones me and he says... It all went horribly wrong. You have no idea. This just gets worse. We are 12 days off finding out how our latest planning application is going, or it will be determined in 12 days. We've got a new consultant. We've got a new design which just answers every single niggle the council have ever had and we've given in we've given in to just about every single element of of the build uh, to make sure that we can secure something and uh, and i just have a, a lady at the gate uh she didn't even say who she was for a good while but anyway she was an enforcement officer from the council uh and i'm trying to be amicable with her and i'm walking around outside with her explaining what the situation is um uh, you know and, and i built it to the caravan act spec and it's movable and it's uh, all the right dimensions and it's allowed to be here obviously we're not allowed to live in here as our primary dwelling but we pay council tax and have the house up the road in the in the village anyway that was the end, and i was still outside with her she's obviously snapping away with her camera and i'm like okay i don't know how this is going right now but in my head i'm thinking this isn't great and then she says can I just have a quick look inside and at this point I've already said you know it's still a work in progress it's uh, not clad on the outside and things like that and we go in and of course the inside is, is finished luckily the kids have gone out with Joe <laughs> but uh, and at that point I hadn't said we were living there and there's like breakfast is out it, it's half term as well so I'm like oh half term so we decided to come up because we had a lot going on on the farm so we've been staying here and then explain that she starts she, taking, she photos, taking photos and then she's like oh. Oh, can i have a look down here so she goes to the boat obviously the kids bedrooms are like <laughs> not unmade beds school uniform on the floor <laughs> We're a real i'm like family here, guys. all right and, and of course when you take a photo it might she might 
not have seen everything there, but she can go back and sit there and she wouldn't be able to see, like, obviously her school clothes and stuff like that. So we went there just for half term and I thought that was absolute game over because at that point we're basically illegally squatting. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, application that we've now put in. We haven't changed the roof, we haven't changed the walls, we haven't changed the cladding, we haven't added many openings. Uh, it is the most conservative Class Q barn conversion you will ever see. But uh, They are just out against every single thing that we're trying here. I mean, I'm done with it. I'm absolutely done with it. I mean, what on earth are we meant to do? We've had z one five-line five email from the council in six weeks so i don't know if they're just playing silent and they're going to bring this enforcement thing into some sort of rejection in a couple of weeks time or whether they're just trying to oh, i don't know this happened last time and they didn't say a word until the last day and then refused it and i just don't know what to do i'm just losing the plot now i like to catastrophize and plan for the worst case scenario so i was like i just need to know what will happen if she comes back and says this yeah. you know and we don't get planning and all the rest of it so we were like i was like right we need to have a holiday let or we need to look for a, a just you know just so we can so i, I mean, can tell myself yeah um, obviously we are in the wrong a little bit at that point but you just you're basically just made to feel like an absolute criminal so <laughs> uh so at that point we've got no planning we're, we're in with our fourth application it's basically it's the proof of insanity and it? just doing the same thing again and again expecting a different result that's basically me and oh and now at this point we're on the cusp of being kicked off yeah. and potentially having to move the cabin off there was a little bit of leeway there in that if they had have said that we were living here and we weren't allowed to we could have taken out all the beds and just had a farm office in there and a welfare area which is just the kitchen i won't even go into my blow-up bed scenario uh, uh, <laughs> Jason, inflatable matches sofa beds in every room <laughs> in the meantime we're not really once again not really hearing anything from the council as far as how this new application is going uh, there is very little chance that we're going to be able to justify staying here without doing a full lap um and, and being able to stay in that cabin and we are just awaiting a decision on our fourth application and that we'll have to wait for the next video because this story is not over but we still have at this point we've just heard absolutely nothing yeah. from the council anyway so uh okay. yeah we'll leave it there if you've got any uh, questions about the first two apps you can head back and see what was going on we've tried to incorporate a little bit of the designs in here but in the future we will be able to share a lot um because it's still ongoing. Still ongoing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.